The first baby born in the U.S. through in vitro fertilization is speaking out after a controversial Alabama Supreme Court ruling. Yeah, 42 years after Elizabeth Carr's birth in Norfolk, she says a ruling that says IVF embryos should be considered children ignores science. As Sarah Hammond tells us, is the decision some critics say could have sweeping implications for the procedure. Since 1981, in vitro fertilization has given millions of people children of their own, like Elizabeth Carr's family. Carr was the first U.S. baby born from IVF right down the street at Eastern Virginia Medical School in Norfolk. People now have less fear around talking about these reproductive technologies. IVF uses sperm to fertilize an egg outside of a woman's uterus before later being implanted. But as the conversation surrounding the procedure has gotten louder, so have the critics. There have always been the naysayers and people who, you know, essentially thought that I should not be here. This month, Alabama Supreme Court justices said three couples could pursue wrongful death lawsuits for frozen embryos destroyed in an accident at a storage facility, calling the embryos extra uterine children. The ruling classifying the embryo as a child caused roughly half of the state's IVF clinics to pause treatment for fear they could face wrongful death lawsuits for discarding unused embryos, a routine part of IVF. When you heard that that ruling came down, what were you thinking? I was really disappointed, obviously, and saddened and angry. Um, you know, the main thing that I really took away from that was that the people that made the ruling truly did not understand the process of IVF. One embryo does not equal one baby. In response, U.S. Senator Tim Kaine co-sponsored the Access to Family Building Act that lays out protections for the procedure nationally, something Carr says she would love to see. But on the other hand, I think it's incredibly disappointing that that is where we are, that we even have to have a bill that, you know, is drafted to, to protect such a thing. In Norfolk, Sarah Hammond, 13 News Now. And since that Alabama Supreme Court ruling, Alabama state lawmakers have pushed legislation forward that would provide civil and criminal immunity for death or damage to an embryo as part of IVF services.